Uh, when Merleau is talking about, about that, he's saying, you know, that when you're tortured, horrible effect on the person, psychological and physical, but the thing that seems to last the longest is the psychological. But not just the person being tortured, also the person doing the torturing. Because when you're, I wonder how many of you guys have already asked me that question, which I've asked you many, many times already. If you were living in Nazi Germany, do you think that you could have been a concentration camp guard? And many of us say, no way, I wouldn't go along with that. That's terrible. Those people were horrible. I'm a good person. I would never go along with what they did. But the fact of the matter is that most people did go along with it. And so that tells us that the kind of person who would resist it is a very unique person. And by the way, a unique person who probably also has to be in a pretty unique circumstance. If you have a family, if you have a spouse, if you have children, if you have you know, brothers, sisters, parents, you're especially vulnerable to stuff like that. So you're not going to participate in this. You're, you know, you're not going to serve your country like everybody else. Well, then your whole family is going to suffer for it. Okay, fine. You go along with it. If you're someone it's just you, you can you know, maybe stand for your principles. It's easy to stand for your principles when you're the only one who has to die for them. Well, it's not easy, but you get what I'm saying. It's a lot harder when you have to make somebody else die for your principles. So the idea is that if you find yourself in a concentration camp, you find yourself as a guard, and then they say to you, um, kill that person over there. And you're like, I'm not a murderer, I'm here to guard people, I'm not here to kill people. That's your job. You go there and you realize that by not following that order, you're going to get the exact same punishment that you would have gotten if you had never put the uniform on in the first place. So you go over there and you kill the person. You have now crossed a threshold that you can't go back from. When you find yourself doing cruel things to people, it affects you. You don't just sit there and go, hey, this, uh, it's fine, it's just my job. Even if we say that, we understand that there's a significant impact on you morally. It makes you think less about yourself. It forces you to, con to confront that idea. Well, I thought murder was a thing that only evil, wicked people did. And I just did it. And then you'll start to justify it as, well, it's part of my job. I was just following orders. I had to. I had no other choice. But there's a, thing, there's a, there's a psychological pressure that's still going to be put on you that you can't really escape from. So yeah, when you, when you abandon those values then you have to live with the consequences of that. We don't typically think of that that way. It's like lying to a person, well now you think everyone's lying to you. So now that makes it very difficult for you to form meaningful relationships. What that also means is that you're going to continue lying to that person, and then when you don't form those relationships, you're going to become bitter and think, well God, everybody's like this. And you're going to think the worst possible things about humanity, and then you're going to act out in other horrible ways. It's, all a it's, it's called a slippery slope. It all kind of flows from there. Once you can get someone to do one little wicked thing, well, now you can get them to do another little wicked thing, and then another little wicked thing. And after a while, man, we're just hop, skipping, and jumping past wicked things. It's like, I've already gone this far. Might as well. It, it, it sears your conscience. You know what it means to sear something? Yeah. Yeah, so you take like, um, ah, good man, I knew you would... It's when you, um, you're going to make a steak, <laughs> or a piece of meat, but steak preferably. And you take the pan, and you don't just put the meat in the pan. First things first, you have to heat the pan. You have to use an oil that can handle high heat, and you turn the heat on high. And once the pan is really, really hot, you put the meat on there, and it goes, and you let it sit there for like 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, 30 seconds if you're a real man, though, right? And then you flip it over, and another 30 seconds or so, and now what's happened is the meat on the outside is, is seared. In other words, it's, it's, been, it's been heated to the point that it's now closed. And then you lower the heat. And the way that the steak cooks is because the heat hits the outside part. It doesn't go into the middle, but because the outside parts are heated, it, it heats the middle part. And that's how the middle part cooks. It doesn't cook from the flame. It cooks from the heat of the, of the searing on the outside. So sometimes we'll sear our conscience in the same way. Meaning that we'll do something terrible, and then we'll flip over our conscience and we'll sear that side too, and now there's really nothing that can, that can permeate that, that can penetrate that. So now, it's easy to get us to do horrible things, like, well, I've already gone this far. You know? It's like a bad negotiation. You see, have you ever seen the movie Bad Santa, any chance? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So remember the scene where they're negotiating? And Bernie Mac is like, He's negotiating with these criminals. 
And he says, I want half. And this one guy's like, let me negotiate. I got this. 60-40. Oh, I'm sorry, 70-30, whatever it was. He goes, half. 65-35. Half. <laughs> and he starts to work his way back down from there, back down from there. And it gets to a point where it's like, it's like, you know, whatever it was, like, you know, 49, 49-51. And the guy goes, half. And the guy goes, you've already come this far. Just, and then they agree to half, of course, which is what it was at the beginning. You start off with this hard position. 70-30, man, that's only fair. There's three of us who cut it three ways. Half. All right, fine. 60-40. Once you can keep getting that person to inch a little bit closer and a little bit closer, now you can get them to do all kinds of things that they never would have imagined that they could have done initially. And that's a really hard thing because, so now you've been in a concentration camp, or you just lied to people, and now you've progressed to a point where can you go back? No, you're too far away to go back. You've already crossed the threshold. And the only people who are going to accept you, by the way, now are the people who do the same things as you, which means it's going to be solidified. And so now you have to hang out with those people, which just makes you a worse person. And it's a very difficult cycle to, to get out of. Yeah. Any Star Wars fans, by any chance? No? Then I'll say that. One question. You remember from uh, Revenge of the Sith when uh, Anakin goes in and he, and he kills the children? And there's this great scene. <laughs> it's, it horrified people. Anakin is, is got one. He's become a bad guy. Just say that. So he goes into this temple. He's trying to wipe out their, his, old, uh, his old friends. And there are these little children. He goes into a room. And these little children are hiding like behind sofas, and, you know, behind like furniture. And they come out and like, Master Skywalker. And there's a scene where it just shows him like from the waist down. It shows one of the little kids. And he just goes, <laughs> and his like, lightsaber lights up. And the little kids go, and you know he's about to murder them. And he does. He kills them all. And it's a really horrifying scene. Um, you sit there and go, like, how could he possibly have done that? Because he already, he already betrayed his old friends. He, one of, he, uh, he helped kill one of, his, one of his old masters. He's killing now a bunch of his old friends. He's going step by step. It's like, well, I've already gone this far. I might as well go all the way on, all the way in on this. So I don't mean to, to beat the point to death. I guess, I, well, actually, I guess I do. But the point is that when you find yourself going down these paths, you can't, you can't go back and undo what you've done, probably. But what you can do is stop. And then maybe little by little start to walk yourself back, but at least you won't cross that bridge in that, in that context. If you just look back and go, I've already done all this, I, there's no saving me now, then you're going to find yourself going further and further and further out there. And at some point you won't even recognize yourself. You'll be a completely different person. Because you'll have violated the exact same thing that I guess I was talking about here. But your values. So I guess that begs the question now. What are your values? Things you value always. Um. <laughs> yes, what kind of things would, would a person value? Things that are worth a lot, I guess. So what would be worth a lot to a person in the, in the context that he's talking about here? But, uh, Maybe. Yeah, so morals. <laughs> so your values are your morals. The A-U. I think we got L. I was going to put the L and the U together, you know? Values. Okay, so, uh, your, so these are your morals, you might say. Uh, what are some examples? Just a few examples of things that would be people's values. Before you add. What's that? Before you add, like, personality. Yeah, so what, so what would be an example of that? Don't kill people. So don't kill people? Straight out of the Be honest. Call it selfless. Yeah, selflessness. There you go. <laughs> I believe you. So these would be some examples of, of what our values might be. And you can have a bunch of them in there, like maybe kindness or or you know virtue, whatever. You have all kinds of things that you could put in there. Tolerance, yesterday someone brought up. So now, how do you know what a person really believes? Because they act on these things. If you walk around and you murder people, you can't say, listen, one of my values is you shouldn't murder, bang! You shouldn't murder people. <laughs> uh, if you do that, you're, you're, you're a hypocrite. And that's the thing that bothers people the most in certain ways. But the reason it bothers us is, well, I'll say that. Um, also, honesty. 
honesty might be important to us. Now, do we really value honesty? Would you rather have someone tell you the truth or have someone lie to you about things? Truth. 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 I don't know. Yeah, the, the answer is probably that. It depends. Sometimes it sounds prettier. Yeah, like what? Like, uh, I'll just give a, a basic example. Like, what Let's say you like cut your hair or something, and it looks really ugly. <laughs> and okay. you're with a friend, and you ask them, "Hey, what do you think about my hair?" And they say, "Uh." <laughs> 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 it, uh <laughs> exactly. You went in a different direction, huh? <laughs> I like your courage. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> It's like you're jumping out of an airplane and some guy jumps out of an airplane next to you except he's not wearing a parachute. And you're falling <laughs> together and you're like, you got guts, bro! <laughs> Doesn't mean it's a good thing, but you got guts. But yeah. you'd rather have them tell you like, oh, well, I, I like it rather than like, a, no, it's ugly. <laughs> no, it's ugly. <laughs> Honestly. So, so there's a question. You might have a friend nearby who, uh, yeah, you might have a friend, hopefully a friend, I don't know why I said nearby, that's stupid. You might have, a, hopefully you have a friend who's close to you. Not, you know, not geographically, but someone who, who, can, <laughs> who can tell you the truth, who you, who you trust enough. And you're like, what do you think about my, my haircut? Uh, yeah, it looks, like you got, it looks like you got hit by a car. <laughs> that bad. I'm, I'm not done. But then that car was an oil tanker that then tipped over, and then a fire started, and it caught your hair on fire. That bad? I'm not done yet. And then the firefighters show up and they put it out, but then the fire truck explodes. You done? Now I'm done. That's what it looks like. Oh, man. Um, but maybe you had the people around you who were supposed to be like your hype people. You should always have someone around you who can tell you the truth. Yeah. And then maybe you got your people around you who are, the hype, you know, who are your hype people. We think about my hair. I love the fact that you just did you, man. You don't even care what people think. What do you mean, what do you care what people think? It reminds me, I had a student one time, uh, a couple of years ago actually, who was out of nowhere. I was talking to him, he goes, you know, man, that's, that's the thing, Tom. Don't, the, the, you know, the reason that people hate you is because you tell them the truth. Oh. Exactly. What was my question? Oh. People hate me? Oh. <laughs> he's like, yeah, but don't even worry about them. It's because you tell the truth. And he's going on, all I heard from the dude was, people hate you. I'm like, like what, what do you mean that they hate me, though? He's like, dude, don't... That's the thing. They'll talk shit behind your back, but they would never say it to you because they, wait, 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 what do, you mean? what do they say? Don't worry about it. It's not the important thing right now. The important thing is that you tell the truth. And you're walking away like, thanks for telling me the, the, the honest truth. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe you want that. Maybe that person who wants that in your life. But as it's been said, a true friend will stab you in the front. Right? Yep. And where do the false friends stab you? In the back, yeah. And then um, selflessness. Now, this going back to, to what Bonnie was saying, the values are expressed this way, but they're best expressed through, through our behavior, the things that we do. So you can tell what a person really believes, not by what they say, but by what they do. A person says don't murder, but then they do it. A person says that they value honesty, but they, don't want to, they won't be honest, and they don't want to take honesty. Um, and then also that maybe they're a selfish person. So you really tell what a person believes by the things that they say and do. Now, but there seems to be one thing. Well, so far so good? Yes, sir. Okay. So there's one thing, though, that seems to cancel out all of this stuff. Take a guess. What emotion is it? Take a guess. Hatred. Yes. Or? Hatred. Hatred, yes. Hatred is the thing that can extinguish all of that. I hate you, and I, I believe that you shouldn't murder people, but man... I get a chance. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, I'm gonna, I would murder that person. You're out there in the forest with this person for some reason on a hunting trip, and you get separated from the rest of the group. <laughs> you're on a lonely mountain, man. You know, maybe you got some decisions to make. Um, when somebody is, if, if you hate a person enough, you'll lie to them, you'll set them up, and you won't be honest with them. If you hate a person enough, then it can make you selfish towards them, or, even, or selfish just kind of generally. Now that's bad enough when you have hatred towards a specific person. You know? Yeah. An English teacher let's say. <laughs> when you have hatred towards a very specific person. But man, it gets so much worse when you're a person who has hatred towards the whole world. And anger towards the whole world. That's what it's so miserable, huh? Yeah. 
And what is that? What does the end of that misery look like? Death. Whose? His. His ultimately. But who knows how many people get in the way of that as well. In a little bit, we're going to be having a drill that's designed specifically for that kind of a thing. When you find people who are, who are active shooters or they're mass shooters or they're mass murderers, this is the thing that seems to dominate it. It's a contempt and a hatred towards the whole world and everything in it. There's a narcissism that's there, which is them determining that they, get, that, that they are qualified to stand in judgment of the whole of existence and being, and then to judge it wanting, to find it not worthy. So because I'm so angry, I hate people so much, I'm going to kill as many of them as possible. And when, we, when, when there are these mass shooters, these mass murderers, we find a lot of time, almost 100% of the time, we find journal entries or videos or posts online or something that reflects that kind of a sentiment. So maybe this, this hatred starts with one person and then it gets applied to lots of different people after that. And that's the real scary ultimate end of it because it won't even have anything to do with you. In other words, we start to take that one person and we project that person onto everybody else. For example, there's a, there's a guy in my gym, my, my instructor, Trevor. Trevor is just, he's a black belt. He's just unbelievably good. I, I rolled with other black belts. They're not in the same league as this guy. He's incredible. And it's frustrating because he's so relaxed and he's, he's very good. And there's another guy at the gym who was actually a former student of mine. He has the same haircut as Trevor. And so I've never even come close, never even come close to, to beating Trevor. But this other guy, I can beat him all day long. So I was joking like uh, two weeks ago because, again, they had the same haircut. And I was saying, man, you look like Trevor. In the back of your head, he's like, oh, yeah. Everyone was like, you know, talking about it. So at one point, I, I was able to get behind him. I was trying to choke him. I'm like, tap, Trevor, tap. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm not Trevor. And like, Sorry, you're good going, Jose. You get the idea? You see, and I was joking. I wasn't really uh, no, I, didn't, I didn't think it was Trevor. It was that, that was the joke. But sometimes you'll hear you know, that kind of thing from people where somebody will say, oh yeah, they got into a fight and they beat a person to death. Why? Because as soon as I started swinging, all I saw was my dad. And it's a person who hates their dad that much. That they then, whenever they get angry, that the anger that they feel towards their dad is the thing that gets poured out into the world. And in extreme cases, you see this with serial killers. Like Ted Bundy, he, uh, he proposed to a girl. You guys know Ted Bundy, is yes? No. Um, Ted Bundy, he proposed to a, to a woman. She turned him down. She just said, you don't have direction in life. You don't really have anything that's going on with you. So he got angry. He left, and he moved, and he moved to the, the northwest of another state, the nice Seattle area. And once he got over there, there's apparently a, a tremendous transformation that happens in him, where he becomes a completely different person. He gets, you know, he's a psychopath, so he's able to blend in very well. He gets his life together, and then once he gets his life together, he, you know, a couple years later, he reconnects with that woman, and they start talking again, and he proposes to her again. And guess what she says, by the way? Yes. Yes. She says yes. You, you've changed. You're a different person. So he proposed to her. She said yes, and then he called it off. He just wanted to prove that he could get her back, and then he went on to kill what 38 women. Oh, Almost all of whom looked just like his, just like that woman. That was an effort on. He, there, was, there was one person that he hated so much. He then acted that, that 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 fantasy of murdering her. He acts it out on thirty-eight, at least thirty-eight other people. So in extreme cases, that's the, that's what that hatred can lead towards. Um, don't hate. <laughs> Spread the love, man. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?